Welcome traders to another Tickner Weekly Market Outlook with me Patrick Munley for week commencing the 7th of November. Uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell has successfully brought the markets on board with the notion that while the central bank will likely look to slow the pace of rate hikes from December after four consecutive 75 basis point moves, the terminal interest rate will likely end up being higher than what it signalled back in September. Nonetheless, this will depend on the data flow. If inflation and job numbers continue on the strong side, it may be that officials end up doing a fifth 75 basis point move. Given this uncertainty, markets are currently pricing around 58 basis points for the December meeting and 42 basis points for February, with a final 25 basis point hike coming at some point in the second quarter of 2023. This week's data will be important, but not critical in determining the path forward. The key release is the consumer price index. With the focus with being within that data, the month-on-month -month core ex food and energy number. Over the past six months, we had uh, one at 0 0.7, four at 0 0.6, and one at 0 0.3 percent. Really need to see numbers closer to 0 0.2 to bring the annual rate towards that 2% target over time. The consensus right now is for a 0.5% print this week. And there is also a second bite of the cherry ahead of the December meeting, uh, December FOMC meeting on 14th of December, given that the November CPI is published on the 13th of December. Nonetheless, <clears throat> if we get a downside surprise, we could see markets looking to price a greater chance of a 50 basis point move in December and possibly a slightly lower terminal rate. Other data in the US this week includes consumer credit and consumer confidence, along with small business optimism. However, these will likely be overlooked given the midterm elections are due on Tuesday. Opinion polls appear to show momentum is building for the Republican Party candidates, with a majority in both the House and the Senate now looking likely um, the, the most likely outcome, really. And uh, if the Republicans can gain control of Congress, President Joe Biden's ability to pass legislation will be severely curtailed. Indeed, there is a far less probability of any fiscal support for the economy through the recession than if the Democrats retain control of Congress, giving Republicans uh, will look to block it. Consequently, if the Democrats lose, then it's more likely that we will see interest rate cuts in the second half of 2023 to provide that stimulus to the help the economy rebound, rather than if they win, where the fiscal policy would likely do more of the heavy lifting and interest rates stay higher for longer to offset any inflationary impulse. So from a technical perspective, the dollar index <coughs> This week traded up into the high volume node and the upper end of the current channel that we're trading in. Um, potential bull flag scenario developing here. It looked like at uh, one point we we're going to break up to test the invalidation point for our current pattern, but we didn't. And sellers stepped back in and we closed uh, pretty weak on Friday at the lows. So what I'm looking for now is uh, an extension to the downside as long as any uh, intermediate rallies are capped around that 111.50, 111.60 area. We are looking for a move back down through 110.20, uh, the prior cycle lows at 109.30s, and then onto our target zone of 109. Then from there, we'll see if buyers are going to step back in. Uh, from a technical perspective at this stage, it will really take a close back through this 113.85, the invalidation level for this pattern to suggest that we uh, will extend to the upside, targeting a move up into this daily trend line projected resistance coming in 117.50s towards 118. In the Eurozone, from a data perspective, uh, calendar is a little lighter next week. Uh, we've got November Centex Investor Conference out on Monday, last time negative 38.3. Yeah, collapsed confidence really undermines Europe's resilience to date. And then heading into Tuesday, September retail sales, last time negative 0.3%. It's been negative so far this year, broadly uh, based across the region. And, uh, and that rounds out the data in, uh, in the Eurozone this week. So uh, moving to the charts, <clears throat> from a technical perspective, uh, the Euro tested and held the trend channel support. And, uh, and we finished with a strong close on Friday. Nice outside reversal pattern on the daily time frame there. So I'm looking now for any pullbacks to find support 
into the 9860s. From there, we look for a move back up to test price cycle highs uh, just above parity and then on to the target level of monthly projected range resistance coming in just below 102. At this stage, we'll take a close below the 9620s to invalidate this pattern and suggest we are heading lower. Moving to the UK, and uh, it's a very light data week in the UK next week. The only real data of note comes on Friday with the Q3 GDP print, uh, looking for, as well, last time out, 0.2% print, sustained period of negative growth really ahead for uh, the UK, it's widely believed. And then we also get September trade balance, uh, last time negative uh, 7 billion, deficit to remain wide for now. So from a technical perspective, in terms of sterling, looking for any move now into the uh, 114.40s, and then he pulled back from there <clears throat> to find support into the 112.80, 113 area. From there, we then look for an extension up to retest prior cycle highs, 116.30s, and then onto the next upside objective at 118. Uh, from a technical perspective, any close back through our invalidation level at 109 would be a bearish development, opening a move back down to test support towards that 105.50. Dollar yen. In terms of data in Japan next week, uh, Tuesday we get uh, September household spending uh, percentage year over year, looking for 2.7 versus last time out 5.1%. Weak retail spending capacity limiting the consumer rebound. And then heading into Wednesday, we get September current account balance, uh, looking for 275 billion yen there. Opportunities in Asia, developed world demand, a risk really for. Uh, for that current account balance. And that rounds out the data in Japan next week. From a technical perspective, dollar yen uh, is still consolidating. Potential uh, triangle pattern here now. So I'm looking for uh, resistance to come in around this 148 level, bearish reversal patterns there, opportunity to engage on the short side to target and move down to our equality objective 143.25. Equally, any close through that 145.60 would also be an opportunity to uh, encourage short exposure for that downside objective. At this stage, we take a close through our invalidation level 149.75 to suggest another upside extension to retest price cycle highs just below 152. Rounding things out down under in Australia in terms of data, ANZ job ads on Monday, so a very high level. Um, then on Tuesday, we get the November consumer sentiment, 83.7 last time out. Mini rally post that October 25 basis point rate hike. But will this be a feature again? Not so sure. October NAB business survey, September conditions up and elevated. Uh, October, potentially this data is going to show, uh, show some signs of slowing. And on Wednesday, we have RBA Deputy Governor Bullock speaking at an economic outlook event in Sydney. Then heading into Thursday, inflation expectations, 5.4% last time out, elevated and well above the target band, mirroring actual inflation. That rounds out the data down under in Australia next week. So from a technical perspective, the uh, Aussie dollar pulled back into retest or invalidation level, held and held the channel support, nice upside extension on Friday. So I'm looking for pullbacks now to find support into the 64 handle. And from there, I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, takes up into our target zone at the 6590s. At this stage, we'll take a close through our invalidation level at the 6270s to suggest a return to the downside and looking for a retest of the price cycle lows into 6170s. Last but not least, let's check out our weekend risk barometer, Bitcoin. Ah, Bitcoin has actually traded up into our target zone <coughs> or just a shy there, 21,470. So we're looking now for a new new pattern to develop here in terms of Bitcoin. So ideally what I'd like to see now are a three-way corrective move here to find support back into this just below the 21,000 level. And we're going to have a new upside objective in terms of a test of this trend line resistance just below the 22,000 level. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.